Last year, as promised, we formed our first veterinary advisory board. And I have to say, I, I fell in love with the vet so much that I went home and bought a dog. So, and my, my wife hasn't forgiven me yet. I hear about it all the time. It grew too big. It's this, it's that. But, and then I text our next guest and say, it's itchy ears. What do I do? What oil? So she's been fantastic. But we have really been delighted with their expertise and and the fact that they've been advising us on the safe and effective use of essential oils with our animals. Here's our, our panel here. And today, we're very fortunate to be hearing from one of the inaugural members of the advisory board, Dr. Janet Rourke. Dr. Rourke, more commonly known as the EO vet, is a veterinarian and the proud owner of Hill Country Mobile Veterinarian Service in Austin, Texas. Some Texans out there. It, it is one of the bigger markets. She, she graduated from the Michigan State University College of Veterinary Medicine in 2005 and began using essential oils in her practice about six months after incorporating them into her daily life. Please give a very warm welcome to our very own EO Vet. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Planner Rourke, the essential oil vet. I am a veterinarian in Austin, Texas. And it's such an honor to be here with you today. A little less than uh, three weeks ago, I was driving to my next appointment around lunchtime, and I got a call from Utah on my cell phone. Thinking it was my doTERRA account manager, I put it on speaker, because my truck is so old, it actually doesn't have Bluetooth. I don't know if you guys know about that. Um, and much to my surprise, the voice on the other end of the line was, um, it, it, she actually said, hi, this is Emily Wright. So, so immediately my heart was racing, kind of like, like it is right now. And in an attempt to turn up the volume on my phone, because I had it on speaker, um, and my truck is also very loud, I actually dropped my phone because um, I'm, you know, super cool like that. When, when I finally found it again and turned up the volume, I was really happy to hear that Emily didn't actually hang up on me. She asked me to present here at convention, and I said, yes, obviously. And we kind of talked about what to cover. She's like, can you cover safety? And thought it would be good to tell some stories and talk about specific oils, exactly how to use them, spend some time myth busting and answer some common questions about oils. And oh, by the way, she said, uh, you have 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm thinking, sure, Emily, no problem. Uh, but of course I told her that would be perfect. <laughs> then she asked me if I had a title and keep in mind this is about five minutes after I found out I was speaking at convention. My heart was still racing and I couldn't reach my balance because I was driving. Um, I told her I would have to think about it and get back to her. Uh, so here we are today talking about coming together for animal care. Yeah. So about 68% of U.S. households, or 85 million families, own a pet. Uh, in these homes, there are an estimated 94.2 million cats. So cat owners win on this one. <laughs> um, 89.7 million dogs, 20 million birds, 14 million small animals, 9 million reptiles, and 7.6 million horses. Most of those live outside, not inside. <laughs> so this is just in the United States. Think of how many more there are globally. 
if we just go by these statistics, that means that about two thirds of the people that use doTERRA oils have animals in their lives. I personally think that number may be a little bit higher because doTERRA users have the capacity to love big and therefore open their homes to animals, but that's just my humble opinion. Yeah, you guys are awesome. There's one thing I learned in my lifetime of working with animals and their owners is that people love their animals and they would do anything within their means to keep them healthy and happy as long as possible. Animals have become an integral part of our families and our lives would not be the same without them. In fact, having an animal can actually greatly improve human lives as well. There's a, quite a few studies about this. Um, one study shows that owning a dog can promote cardiovascular health. Another indicates that pets in um, homes with children can actually help improve their immunity and respiratory health. Animals can also decrease stress at the end of a long day. Who doesn't love snuggles? And it's no wonder we've incorporated them into our lives so closely. It's important to keep our pets in mind though um, as we use essential oils in our homes. So dogs and cats uh, in particular have 200 to 300 million olfactory receptors compared to humans five to six million. So their sense of smell is very sensitive and when you're diffusing, you need to just be sure you're using a water-based diffuser like the Petal or the Lumo, my favorites, and only diffuse four to five drops at a time in an open area where your pet can leave the room if desired. With birds and reptiles, you have to be a little more careful and start with just two to three drops and be sure your diffuser is not directly next to their enclosure, their um, terrarium or their cage. It is a little bit harder to diffuse in a barn situation, uh, but horses, cattle, goats, chickens, and all your barnyard friends can benefit from diffusing as well, actually. So diffusing, um, as we've learned during convention, uh, is a great way to help with the stress in our lives and also in our animals' lives. And today, in today's world, we hustle and bustle everywhere, uh, going from one thing to the next, running all over town and sometimes all over the world with our schedules filled to overflowing. But packing everything into our schedule can leave us feeling tired, unhappy, and totally stressed out. So we come home to relax. And there she is, your beloved animal, wanting to take away all your stress by just loving you no matter what. It's the most amazing thing in the world to be loved unconditionally by an animal. But she sees you've had a hard day. She isn't sure why. The stress that you wish you could leave at the door seeps into your home and your animal feels it. I wish the stress in our own lives didn't affect our animals, but it does. Uh, we're seeing more and more behavioral problems, health problems, emotional problems in our animals because of it. Chronic stress might lead to um, aggression in one animal or fear-filled behaviors in another, um, digestive disturbances or unexplained weight loss. Long-standing stress actually may result in some pretty serious health problems. So many things uh, that veterinarians see manifested as health issues is actually the result of something that started out as chronic stress in our animals. And why is that? In short, because stress leads to a compromised immune system. Luckily, we have a lot of oils that help decrease the stress in our lives and in our animals' lives. I'm about to show you a video of a cat that was under a lot of stress. She's in a shelter here, um, and the people at the shelter couldn't handle her without her lashing out. They actually had to wear thick um, treatment gloves for her treatments. Um, so I went there and we let her self-select some oils. She wouldn't let us touch her or anything. And she chose lavender and balance. My friend, uh, and colleague, Dr. Sablehouse is one of the amazing veterinarians at the Austin Humane Society. She sent me this video and was kind enough to let me share it with you today. It was actually taken about 20 minutes uh, after they started the diffuser. So this is Dahlia. She's a very cautious skin. And she has calmed down a little bit, it's more come out of her 
cattle. Um, she was kind of rubbing on my legs. Let's see if she'll let us cut her. Wow. She's never allowed me to do that to her. What do you think, girl? I've got a little lavender and balance in my hands, too. Yummy. She's being very affectionate. Do you like your oils, kitty? Thalia was adopted a week later. And that, my friends, is why I will never stop telling people about the safe and effective use of doTERRA essential oils with cats when used properly. Yeah. Okay, no tomatoes, we're good. Okay. Uh, who here loves citrus oils? <laughs> well, that was pretty weak. I guess it's kind of late in the afternoon, yeah. <laughs> me too, me too. Me too. Since we're talking about stress a little bit, we know that citrus oils can really help with stress and uplifting mood. Um, uh, did you guys know that veterinarians are three and a half times more likely than the general population to commit suicide? This is a statistic that terrifies me. Veterinarians know about stress. I know about stress. doTERRA's wellness lifestyle has quite literally saved my life more than once. And part of that is because of citrus oils. <laughs> so when people tell me they're afraid to diffuse citrus oils because of something they read on the internet that um, it could hurt their animals, it makes me really, really sad. It hurts my heart because they're missing out on the amazing benefits of these beautiful oils. I've tried and tried to find a reason why the internet keeps perpetuating this lie that citrus oils are toxic to animals. I cannot find any research to back this up. I did, however, find a great research article about the use of lemon essential oil at 1% dilution in combination with clary sage, rosemary, and uh, Roman chamomile at 0.5% in dogs for ear support that found these uh, oils extremely effective with no adverse reactions, I might add. Yeah. So can we please lay this myth of citrus oils being toxic to animals to rest once and for all. What do you think? <laughs> yes. All right. Um, there are a few oils that we do need to be careful with around dogs and cats, and we talked about those last year on the veterinary panel. Um, and so, of course, we can use other safer oils instead. So here are a few suggestions. Um, instead of Melaleuca, we can use geranium, myrrh, or cedarwood instead of wintergreen or birch. Uh, we can use frankincense, copaiba, or aromatouch. Instead of cassia, use on guard, oregano, or thyme. And for cats, instead of uh, the mints like peppermint or spearmint, we can definitely use um, cardamom or arborvitae. When using oils topically with animals, so we're talking about topical use now, uh, just make sure especially with small animals like dogs and cats, to always dilute your oils to a 1 to 5% dilution prior to application. Just remember, the smaller the animal, the more dilution you will need. With horses, goats, cattle, other large animals, dilution is generally not needed, although with some sensitive skinned horses, if you have thoroughbreds, um, they may need a 5 to 10% dilution of very, very hot oils like oregano or thyme. Or cinnamon. So exactly how are we going to apply the oils topically? Um, <laughs> there are a lot of different techniques and ways to apply the oils topically with both people and with animals, as you guys know. But the main point I want to get across here is to just get the oil on them. Um, the oils will absorb into the body. The body will know what to do with them. 
uh, but there are some some common ways to apply the oils topically to an animal since Emily did want me to cover this. <laughs> so um, you can apply it topically, dilute it properly along the spine. This is generally the most widely accepted application of the oils because animals are used to being pet along their backs or brushed along their backs. Um, ear tipping is another really common way to use the oils. Of course, don't do this if your animal hates their ears being touched. We want them to have a really positive experience with the oils. Um, and um, the um, massage, so, so animals really love a nice gentle massage. Um, hot and cold compress is another really great way to apply it. The oils is very effective or directly to the area of interest. If they have a scrape or a lump or a bump, you can put it right on there. So um, this is a photo of a horse that got stung by something. We don't, we're not really sure what. But as you can see here, there's a pretty decent amount of swelling. Um, her owner applied lavender and copaiba undiluted directly to the swelling. And this is what it looks like about 24 hours later. So, yeah, it's cool. So topical application with animals absolutely works. But we do have to have some common sense when it comes to topical use of essential oils. So remember to use some common sense. We learned earlier today that not everyone has common sense, even if you're a brilliant clinical oncologist. Um, so, yeah, no. Please don't put a whole bottle of deep blue on your dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be sure. <laughs> so here's some common sense. I'm gonna actually go through it since, since not everyone has common sense. So be sure to dilute the oils as we talked about already. So one to 5% dilution for small animals. Know your animal's health status. You're gonna have to work with your veterinarian on this one. Um, and then don't apply oils topically on sensitive areas or directly in the eyes, down into the ear canal or the nose. Always use caution when using um, oils around animals that are pregnant, nursing, very young or very small, and of course, only use doTERRA oils. Yeah. Okay, let's, now let's talk about the oh so controversial topic of internal use of essential oils. Oh yes, I'm going there. <laughs> Can you use essential oils internally with animals? <laughs> you guys must follow me on social media. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that yes, certain oils you can use internally with animals, again, if you use some common sense. Start with just one drop of the essential oil or even dilute it first, uh, but that's usually not necessary. You can mix it with food, put it in a capsule and give it that way. With hot oils, I do recommend using a capsule now, keep in mind that some essential oils are not recommended for ingestion, and those are the same ones we would want to avoid using internally with animals. And that's especially important to remember when we're talking about topical use of essential oils with cats. So cats actually ingest oils by normal grooming practices. So it's a bit, so a bit more care should be used when selecting the oils that are being used topically with our kitty cats, uh, because chances are they're going to get some of it internally when they groom themselves. So we've already talked about a couple of oils that we can use with, with animals like balance and lavender, but we have time to cover a few more. Um, one of the most common questions I get asked about is how to help animals as they get older. One of my favorite combinations of oils to use for them is copaiba and frankincense internally and diluted aroma touch topically. I can't tell you how many people have told me that this combination has helped their animal that was previously having a hard time getting up, and after just a week of using these oils, they're running around like two-year-olds again. It's amazing. This is Lucy. She's the best dog in the world. I love her. I sing to her. She loves to run around in Texas, and we have lots of bushes and, you know, cacti. <laughs> so she gets occasionally scraped up. Um, and I love to use geranium or myrrh when this happens and on guard internally just to help boost her immune system. So that's Lucy, the best dog in the world. Now meet Miles. He's cute. Don't let his cuteness affect you. It's 
deceiving. Miles is not the best dog in the world. I love him though. <laughs> He's my baby. He eats everything like couches um, and entire bottle of A to Z vitamins. Apparently that's okay, including part of the actual bottle and <laughs> remote controls <laughs> and other things that are not food related. <laughs> Honestly, I think the only reason this dog is somehow still alive is because of digestion. I love this oil. Dilute it and apply it topically before car rides or anytime you need some digestive support for your animals, like Miles does pretty much every single day. So I love him. He's my puppy. Um, this is also an amazing oil for those of you horse owners out in the audience that know when tummy troubles come, it's really, it's really not very fun at all. So. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> so those are just a few of the oils that you can use with your animals. There are many, many more, uh, but I don't have time to cover those today. There are, There is just uh, one more myth I want to tackle still, and that's that essential oils can cause liver or kidney damage. Um, this senior kitty actually had elevated kidney levels, not because of essential oil use. Um, indicating them the need for a little bit of extra support, which she did get because her owner was awesome and working with her regular veterinarian and adjusting her diet and giving her fluids. Um, but she was getting stiff, so her owner um, added some diluted oils, topically for joint support, some copaiba and lavender, and not surprisingly, this cat's kidney level levels actually are the best they've ever been. Well, it, it, but the best they've been in two years since she was diagnosed, so they're back to normal. Um, so in this case, essential oils actually supported the kidneys when they needed it as a side benefit to trying to help with the, the joints, which of course they help with those as well. So, okay, for this next part, I'm going to ask you to please stay a little bit quiet as I welcome my friends, Miss Harley and Miss Jackson Brown and their human, Audra Robinson, to the stage to tell their amazing story. Hi everyone, we are so excited to be here with you all today. Can you tell Jackson Brown loves her Auntie Janet? <laughs> Can you do a downward dog for me, Harley? Where's your downward dog? Good downward dog, Harley. You guys can clap for them, it's okay. <laughs> we just weren't sure how they were gonna be when they first came out. <laughs> so we have had amazing experiences with doTERRA with essential oils over the past few years. One of the most memorable was Valentine's Day last year. I made candida friendly muffins. I was doing a candida friend buns, and the sweetener was xylitol. At the time, I did not know how toxic xylitol is for dogs. My friend and I were volunteering that day at a senior living home. I rushed out the door, leaving the muffins on the stove to cool. I got back five hours later, and to no one's surprise, the muffins were gone, right? And my dogs were lethargic. Jackson Brown could barely stand up. I called poison control, got the dogs in the car, and rushed them to the nearest vet hospital. The doctors ran some tests, and then two of them actually came out and sat me down. They told me if I hadn't brought my dogs in when I did, they would be done. And they told me that it was very unlikely that Jackson Brown would make it through the night. If Harley made it through the night, she still had a rough week ahead of her. I got on my knees and started to pray asking God to heal my girls, to wrap them in his arms, to give the veterinarians the wisdom, the knowledge, everything they needed to keep my girls safe. One of the amazing people that he sent me was Dr. Janet Rourke. Yes, you guys can applaud, you can clap. <laughs> Not only did she give me a protocol of oils to use on my dogs to keep them calm in the hospital, 
She also gave me a protocol of oils and a couple of doTERRA vitamins to help get their bodies back into balance. 30 days later, I took them for their checkup. We went into the hospital. <laughs> Something's happening. I don't know what. <laughs> we went into the hospital. They ran the tests. And the doctor came out and told me she couldn't believe how quickly their livers were actually going back into balance. Yes, round of applause. <laughs> and before, when we, were, when we were leaving the hospital, she actually said she didn't think that her, their liver count would actually ever normalize. And if it did, it would take a very long time. So. She uses essential oils now. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> we love our oils, and to this day, I give Harley and Jackson Brown frankincense and copaiba internally every day. It goes in their food. Harley, what's your favorite oil? Is it Digest Zen? Why? Why is that your favorite? Is it because you eat horse poop when I take you hiking? <laughs> 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 so she loves her digest zen and these girls also get lavender essential oil and purify on a weekly basis during bath time doTERRA founders thank you so much for providing god's gift of the earth to all of our dog owners we are so grateful for ha having the tools to keep them healthy, happy, and terrific. And Dr. Janet, thank you so much for having us up here today to share our story. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. <laughs> That's my girl. Come on, babies. She's not, she's not sure about that camera guy. This way, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> thank you, Audra, Harley, and Jackson. See, essential oils can actually support the liver. Um, but as you just heard from Audra, xylitol is very toxic to the liver. And we do have a few doTERRA products that contain xylitol that you'll want to keep away from your pets at home. So for my last safety tip, the products that contain xylitol are listed on this slide. Be sure to keep these in a safe place where your pets can't reach them by accident. Oh, bring the slide back, guys, <laughs> so they can take pictures. Everyone get your phones out. Take a picture. Also, it's also on my Facebook page if you guys want to go there. Okay. Um, so I hope and pray that this information uh, that I provided for you today helps you feel a little more confident when using essential oils with and around your animals. As their advocate, together with regular veterinary care, you can help them live long, happy, and healthy lives. Thank you.